and good morning everyone. Uh, my name is William Elvis and I'd like to welcome you to Stanford Makerspace. I'd like to give a warm welcome to uh, our, our two guys here. But before I introduce them, um, happy World Science Day. We have just, uh, uh, on the 10th of uh, November, we celebrate a World Science Day. And actually, uh, World Science Day was proclaimed in, uh, on the 10th of November 2001 by UNESCO. And uh, it, it, it is uh, very important to us all because it plays a significant role for science in society and uh, how we engage in science for, for our students is very, very important. All right. We, in collaboration with our STEM content uh, providers, uh, academia and strategic corporate partners, we have scheduled actually a lot of programs during these past few days. Uh, we actually started on the 10th, uh, that was day one, uh, day two, day three, and today, day four, we have uh, our, our, our two uh, guests on the side, which I'll introduce right now. Uh, we have Mr. Xiao Yok Hock on, our, on, my, on my right, and Mr. Lo Qinghyang from HELP University. Thank you very much to the two of you for coming. And, um, the two of them are actually um, high-level achievers. They are basically superstars. Uh, they are not just merely, uh, what do you call it, A-level uh, lecturers, but they are so much more. They do a lot of things in their free time. And uh, I think uh, Professor Dr. Dr. Paul Chan, uh, the Vice Chancellor of HELP University, is very happy. He actually told me, he said, William, you've got to put this, these two guys on because they have actually won awards uh, seven uh, about for for not consecutively but almost almost consecutively for the past seven years and and they are the recipients of the malaysia Torrey science foundation science education award so this is a really big deal and uh, they are going to actually uh, show how we can uh, or what do you call it uh, accommodate science uh, as part of stem in the, in the sense that uh, the future of STEM is basically what we have on my left and right here. All right. So HELP University is also uh, important in guiding students and also uh, uh, adults who, are, who, are, who like to engage in uh, furthering their education. I think the, the, the program that's interesting is the NUP which is the National Upskilling Program where, where HELP is very, very active in re-educating those who want to, to go for the masters or even the PhDs as well. All right. And uh, I must say, uh, HELP University has been ranked number one among 650 universities in Asia for the outbound student exchange programs under the QS uh, World University Ranking Asia 2021. So congratulations for that. Also congratulations to HELP. You are 35 years old this, this year. And uh, from 1986 until now, uh, they have actually uh, been very aggressive in promoting education, especially education in STEM in Malaysia. So very proud, very proud to say that. So without further ado, I just want to introduce, uh, I think we'll start off with uh, Mr. Xiao here. He, he has more than 15 years of teaching A-levels in biology and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Xiao, he is the physics master, I would say. He, he has uh, a, also 15, more than 15 years teaching A-level physics and uh, his list of awards, I don't think I can list them out right now because it's more than two to three pages long. I think I'll let him do the talking for you and uh, Mr. Xiao. Over to you. Okay, thank you, William. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, okay, so first of all, I would like to take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, Stand for All Makerspace and also Dr. Paul Chan, the founder of uh, Hub University, okay, for inviting me to become uh, one of the guest speakers for today's event. Okay, so uh, maybe I would like to start with uh, my presentation. The title will be um, How Hub University Designs STEM Education. Okay, and uh, yeah, I would like to uh, share more about the Getting the Age program. All right, so first of all, I would like to uh, give a brief introduction about HELP Academy, which is the subsidiary of uh, HELP University. 
And in 2011, um, Help Academy was declared as the best and biggest ASL A-level center in the world. And uh, currently, we are offering uh, dual exam boards, uh, which are um, Pearson ASL, IAL International A-level program, and also uh, Cambridge uh, Assessment International Education, or CAIE. And up to date, uh, we have won, uh, means our students have won more than 120 World Awards okay, in academic. And also our teachers have won 27 MTSF uh, Malaysia Story Science Foundation Science Education Award. And this year, we have a remarkable achievement in terms of acad academic results. More than 77% of our students scored uh, straight A's. Uh, which means that they have to score at least three A or A stars. Okay, so maybe um, you may be wondering why uh, we can so-called achieve this kind of uh, achievement. And uh, I would like to share more about the program that uh, we are running. We call it as a Getting the Edge, or in abbreviation, we call it as a GTE. And um, I always ask like, um, do you wish to enter one of all these universities? Um, the audience, if you recognize the university that you dream to go to. And I would like to share that um, for help, we have students uh, enter to all of these, all of these World Health Universities, and some of them are still currently studying in these universities. So this program is mainly um, designed to groom the student so that they will have a more holistic perspective towards their studies and also their soft skills so that they will be able to get a place to the world top universities. So I'd like just uh, to share a, a little bit more about uh, this workshop. Uh, basically, there are four workshops here. Okay, So SWP, Speech Writing and Presentation, CA, Current Affairs, MTSF, Malaysia Torah Science Foundation, and the fourth one, MIT. Uh, not Massachusetts Institute of Technology, but Mathematics, Innovation, and Technology. So today, yeah, today I would just, um, I would say more focus on MTSF and MIT because uh, due to the theme of today, World Science Day. And we have a team of uh, seven coaches for this program. Ms. Visha, Ms. Poon, Mr. Shi, Mr. Chiu, Mr. Lau with me today, Dr. Kong and myself. So first, I would like to share more about MIT workshop. So this workshop, uh, particularly, we are focusing more on the technology and mathematics. And also, like um, if you look at the, the slide here, um, I think recently we will be uh, more focusing on the 3D design printing. But in the past, also, we did some uh, MATLAB programming and also the R programming. So this is the reason, um, so a workshop that we have just done. Okay, so students learn about how to use uh, this uh, self-cat. It's actually an online uh, computer-aided software okay, for the 3D modeling and design. So after they have done the so-called the drawing or the design, they can print up the model. So they can uh, so -called have a touch on their own product. So we have a, a 3D printer. And we are going to bring in uh, more 3D printers, I think, soon. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. So uh, we also like give the students an early exposure on this kind of like software, which is actually commonly used by the leading scientists and engineers. So they are able to so we'll learn some basic programming and applications, at they are doing their A level studies, which will be very uh, helpful if those like who plan to apply for engineering or science courses. And of course, with the current trend, uh, I think everybody is talking about like data science, big data. Yeah. So, yep, so our program will be like um, one of the um, so called programming language that they use okay, for the big data. So, next, I would like to move on to um, the next workshop because um, Malaysia Torah Science Foundation. So, it stands for um, yeah, MDSF, it's actually established by a Japanese uh, found a company. And it is actually a Japanese foundation in collaboration with the Ministry of Education Malaysia. So the objective is to promote science and technology education okay, via research uh, at both um, 
secondary and also tertiary level. So at HELP, uh, we encourage the student to participate and every week they will spend two hours uh, to work on whether on the design activity or a specific project. And uh, we are also like uh, participating for this uh, MTSF Science Education Award competition every year. And the activities will be like involved like uh, more to biology, chemistry, physics, or a mixture of uh, these three science subjects. So these are the past activities that we did. Um, so students learned how to make their own yogurt. Oh, that's nice. And also developing the glue. And this year, we did something different. Okay, we have a, a theme for this year's workshop because it's a forensic science. So if you look at the content, it's all about um, how do we apply the science knowledge that they learn maybe in secondary school or A-levels in forensic science. So we have like blood spatter analysis, ballistic and glass analysis, DNA analysis, entomology, chromatography and handwriting analysis. So I just show you one of the experiments that I did. Okay, it's called blood spatter uh, experiment. So uh, we did a bit of simulation of the crime scenes. So this like uh, when the time that we we still allowed to go to college to do the face to face uh, uh, activity. And this year, of course, uh, due to MCO, so we we transfer this from so called face to face to online. So I did my first live streaming on this uh, blood spatter uh, experiment. So it's like a crime scene. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we made our own fake blood. It looks, but it so looks real, real, yes. Because you have the Chinese newspapers there as well. Then that's very real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also students we can learn about like how, how they can they can calculate the angle of impact where the so called the blood uh, spot hit the surface. Mm -hmm. So it's quite interesting. So I would say that um, after the student participated in this workshop, they, they were more appreciative about their, the side knowledge that they learned in the academic. Because they know that, oh, actually all these things that they learn is actually applicable in the real world and in this uh, forensic science industry. So I would say uh, this will be uh, quite, quite um, amazing. They will see that, oh, how can this be applied? You know? So all of this, uh, uh, Mr. Xiao, can be, can be put into calculations and numbers and yes, things like that. Correct. So, so that is actually very, very uh, uh, exciting. And also, is it, I think you made the blood spatter into something very measurable. I think that's, that's interesting as well. Okay, yeah. please carry on. Okay, sure. Thank you. So next, uh, I would like to share about the Malaysia Tourist Science Foundation Science Education Award. So this is actually the website. If you're interested to know more, you can just visit the website. Okay. And uh, we actually participated uh, in this, uh, pro uh, so this competition since uh, 1995. And up to date, we have won total of 27 awards. Oh, congratulations. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, personally, I've won seven of them. <laughs> okay, yeah, as, as the winner. Okay, and I, I also so got, uh, become the co-winner of another three projects. So like in general, it's about total of 10 awards. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is actually my first uh, uh, so-called award-winning project. I started in 2011, okay, which is actually a winner prize, means actually a champion. Okay, the title called uh, Contactless Electromagnetic Breaking System. So where we simulate the uh, so-called the breaking system or the bullet train. Oh, so okay. bullet train can't use the normal you know, braking like, like what we are having in the car. Mm -hmm. So that we like the physical brake pad. Yeah. I think the brake pad can just uh, broke or fly off you know, <laughs> because the, the speed is so fast. Okay. So they will be using something like this, okay, the electromagnetic braking system. So and the yep. just to explain how how yep. how does the, the the train stop? I mean, basically the train is levitated slightly above, like yeah. So how does it how does it? Okay, stop? so this is something to do. We call it as electromagnetic induction. Uh -huh. So where the eddy current will be induced on the disc. Okay. Okay, and and this eddy current will produce we call it as a braking effect means at the opposing force that's acting to the motion. So that reverses the speed. Exactly. So it will slow it down first. Uh -huh. So probably when the stroker train slows down, mm -hmm. so we can use the conventional braking pad, you know, to break it. Okay. Yeah. 
it, is it being applied right now? Yes, or, yes. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, the one that may be in uh, Japan. Yep. So in the following year, also I, I won another sort of winner prize. Uh, it's called a Dancing Para Wires. Uh, it's related to electromagnetism, where where uh, when high current flow through the, the two para wires, and that will create the um, we call it as a attraction and a repulsion effect. So you will see like as if the, the wires are dancing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And also I've applied a patent for this oh, uh, okay. model. Okay, and uh, it's awarded. It's awarded. Congratulations. This Thank is you. not easy to get a patent yeah. here. So I'd like to share maybe a bit few few more of my project uh, award winning projects. So this is another one that uh, I've won in two thousand seventeen, also winner prize. Mm. Uh, I believe if you are a secondary student, uh, maybe you have been learning this um, in form five for SPM and uh, yeah. maybe year eleven for IGCSE. Okay, so it's actually that, uh, showing you the role of a capacitor. Okay, in the half wave rectification and also full wave rectification. So I'm making a model here. It's like uh, to give you a, a so called two in one demonstration model. Yeah, I see. And, you and today, the, yes, yeah, I've bought it. He's brought the rectifier here. <laughs> okay, so it's, this is the one that uh, yeah I I I I, I work, in, work with this with my yeah. student. We we really yeah. love this kind of stuff because uh, this is all DIY as you can yeah. see, and it works. So the experience the experiential uh, part of it that's where the learning part comes comes into it so this is very exciting we love to have a, something like this in our in our center with the collaboration that we're working with help you know so uh, sure, like sure yeah <laughs> yeah i believe we, we, we can work more more on uh, something similar to this yes and another one is actually uh, uh 2018 uh, run out price uh, because before I become an educator, it's like I, I was actually an, a product engineer in a hard disk uh, company. Okay, um, and uh, so I, I so got it's in the way that give, give me the, the inspiration to come up with this model. Uh, so this model is actually like a simulation on the, the read mechanism of a hard disk drive. So um, in help, we are not just uh, doing it on our own. In fact, we engage students to work with us. So if we look at the, the so called the, the few uh, slides that I showed just now, there are some students that are working with me. On project basis. Yeah, on the projects, you're right. right. And and they got inspired. Um, and, and not only that, in fact, uh, you can see they are actually not just uh, good in this kind of co-curriculum activities, yeah. Yeah. they are also excellent in their academic achievement. Exactly. But yeah. this, this gives them gives them an added uh, practical uh, part to actually help them to actually uh, learn and develop new ideas. As well. Exactly, it's exactly. very important. Yeah. And also it's like what maybe it's also like a differentiator for them when they apply for all these worktop universities mm -hmm. because they go for extra miles yeah. compared to others. Yeah. You see yeah. that that's where the difference is making stuff. Uh, yeah. If you don't make stuff, everything is on theory. It doesn't really uh, what do you call it uh, give you the the impact that you 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 need while learning. So this is something very important. We call it the maker spirit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So here I'd like to share just maybe uh, three three of my students, which, which actually um, I think they have an excellent achievement. Okay, first we have Mr. Go Kawe, graduated from University of Cambridge, Faculty of Law, and. Uh, me might be surprised. He actually a, a top scorer in physics, oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, he won a, a world top award in physics uh, during his A level studies. Yeah, so he, he actually uh, worked with me for the for my so called first uh, MTSF uh, project winning uh, award winning project. Yeah, in two thousand eleven. It's very admirable. Yeah, so this is the the photo I took with him few few years ago <laughs> when he came back from uh, from UK. Next, we have Neil Yuizing. Nilisin, okay, she's also a uh, graduate from Cambridge. Uh, she did her natural sciences. So she also uh, involved actively in the Getting the H program. What project did she do? Um, in 2016, so uh, she joined us uh, to work on this project uh, called Excite with Physics, Bond with Chemistry, yeah, mm -hmm. and the Integrated Photosynthesis Model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so uh, so called they, they did, uh, we did a model to simulate the photosynthesis process in detail. Yeah, which uh, maybe the student might be so called having difficulty to mm. visualize it. Mm. You know, just based on the textbook. Yes. So this model will be like a, a good help for them to understand the process in the more detail. 
She is she based in UK or she's coming? Ah, he just she just came back from oh. UK. Just graduated. Want to introduce her to us? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think she would like to visit this place yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, a little bit more about her achievement. So she she got the highest mark in Asia for biology and also the highest mark in Malaysia for chemistry during uh, her A level studies. And next we have Mr. Chunhauser. Uh, she has just uh, he has just graduated um, in Masters of uh, Material Science, mm -hmm. first class honor. Yeah. Is this the text that you just received? From yes, the right correct. So this is this is really common. Yeah, yeah correct. Exciting. Yeah, he just scored. Uh, yeah, he also scored four A star. Wow. Yeah, in his A levels, and uh, he just received a, a sort of scholarship from NTU Singapore. And he's currently in Singapore now doing his PhD in material science. Congratulations, yeah. congratulations to Mr. Chu. Yeah, and also uh, just got to know that uh, NTU ranked world number one this year by QS. <laughs> so, um, in the course of my education career, maybe I would like to just share a bit of my so called my secret of uh, my working you know, yeah. attitude. Uh, I call it this as a five piece principle which uh, was introduced by my uh, superior when I worked in another company mm -hmm. before I, I joined the education industry yeah. Yeah, in a semiconductor uh, industry and yeah, I'd like to share about this 5P principle um, so as, educational, ed, uh, as educators we, we must have passion in, uh, and to love what we do okay? persistence in our life and never give up to face when we face with obstacles and also we need patience to stay calm and wait for the inspiration sometimes when, like, when we do some project you know yes yeah and um, we need the precision when we work on uh, so-called the project and uh, to focus in order to produce uh, the quality work and uh, lastly perfection to continue uh, improve, improving towards the excellence of whatever we do okay and keep calm and dream big <laughs> oh, that's, that's very nice <laughs> That's very nice. I think this is a great ethos to, to have for, for, all, for everyone uh, besides having the maker spirit to actually have the passion to do what you want to do. And uh, when you are thinking about your career options, uh, I would suggest to, to really sit down with yourself and think what you want to do in the future. Um, if you want any help, uh, help the university they do offer uh, counselling as well yes, to yes. to actually help you with your with with uh, with your past or your future, and then you see where you can go from there, right? Anything else? That you, when you share, that's your last slide. Uh, yeah, that's my last slide. Okay, so maybe yeah. Oh, right. excellent, yeah. excellent. So our next speaker is Mr. Low. He's a, you're a biologist. Yeah, am I right to yes. say? But uh, but before I introduce Mr. Law, I want you guys to 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 hang back as well because after the Mr. Law's inter, inter uh, session, we're going to have uh, Mr. Chatura from uh, from Hologo. So just be uh, patient. We'll we'll come on the third part of the session, and that will be talking about the VR and AR as well. All right. So over to you, uh, Mr. Mr. Lowe is a what do you call it? Senior, also a senior lecturer for A levels in uh, biology, and he is also a multiple uh, what do you call it? proud achiever in uh, in in the uh, Torre uh, Science Education Awards. And uh, I'll just pass it over to you. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Lowe. Yeah, thank you, William. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Okay, so uh, today I would like to uh, share with you. Uh, more about um, the educational tools or the teaching aid that I use uh, in my teaching of biology. Yeah, to, to just uh, uh, more of a sharing. Yeah. So uh, I've won uh, the MTSSI Education Award twice. Uh, once in 2013 and once uh, this year. Yeah, uh, uh, in 2021. So I'll share with you the the two project my two uh, award-winning project and uh, also show you how I incorporate them uh, in my teaching, in my lesson. Yeah, the first one uh, that I won in 2013 was um, a project that I made together with two of my students. Yeah, and it's called Ultra Filtration and Reabsorption in the Nephron. So um, this is basically a process, yeah, process that happened in our kidney uh, to form urine. Yeah, 
Uh, but because it's, it's something that happens within our body, so it's sometimes a bit difficult for our students to actually visualize the process. Yeah? So other than to watch, uh, let's say, YouTube video or animation. So there are other ways yeah, that we can do. So in this case, uh, I made a teaching model using very uh, easily available material, you know, things like a mineral water bottle, yeah? mineral water bottle here and also uh, plastic tubings and so on. So this model is easy to make and cheap to produce. Yeah? So, but most importantly, it is effective in um, you know, helping the student to visualize the process. So I use this model to simulate, yeah? simulate the process of urine formation. Yeah? Urine formation, I use uh, some beans, different kinds of beans, red bean, mung beans, yeah? to, uh, you know, to represent the different kinds of molecules. The inside, uh, inside the kidney and see how these things can be filtered and eventually end up in the kidney or they get reabsorbed yeah, uh, back into the blood. Yeah? So um, in the course of making this, I actually uh, get the help of my two students. So they work with me and then we uh, have brainstorming together. Yeah? And, uh, no, and I'm also glad that they also uh, you know, get inspired to, to actually do more uh, you know, about biology to get more interested in biology and so on. Then here we have the uh, 2021 this year uh, MTSF Science Education Award winner prize, uh, Augmented Reality of Double Fertilization in Flowering Plants. Yeah, so basically this is a project yeah, that uh, share my experience yeah, in using uh, AR as well as uh, gamification in the teaching of plant biology. Yeah, plant biology, specifically the part about uh, plant reproduction. Yeah? So now I always found that uh, among my biology students, yeah, most of them, they, they, they liked the human biology part more. Yeah? They, they, many students they say, oh, I, I like this part about uh, no, human reproduction, mm -hmm. uh, circulation about the heart, no genetics and DNA and so on. But very seldom students say they like plant biology. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so therefore, uh, I decided to do something about it. So therefore, uh, I decided to uh, make the teaching of plant biology more fun by incorporating some educational tools, games, mm -hmm. you no, know, mm -hmm. in, you know, in delivering the subject. So here, okay. So I use uh, two things here. So one is the AR model. The other one is actually uh, online game. Yeah, online game. So AR basically is a three D model. Yeah, uh, that is placed against the uh, you know, real background. Yeah, real background rather than the, the virtual background. So it's a bit different from uh, virtual reality. So let me share with you a little bit about the lesson flow uh, you know, of how I incorporate AR and also the digital uh, escape room game uh, in my teaching of this particular topic called reproduction in plants. Yeah, so I first uh, use the AR model no, as a starter, no, as an appetizer to arouse the interest of the student. Then after that, uh, the student can actually explore the AR model uh, on their own, on their own device. Yeah, mm -hmm. on their own device, they can take their own time, own sweet time to, to actually uh, explore it. Then after that, followed by some discussion among themselves and also with uh, the teachers. Then lastly, lastly, we did a review activity together. Now, rather than uh, using the normal quiz or test, yeah, I decided to do it in a slightly different way. Yeah? So I made a game you know, called Digital Escape Room, uh, which can be done using Google Form yeah, as an innovative way uh, to review the understanding of the uh, student. Well, that's very interesting, uh, Mr. Law. The yeah. digital escape room, mm. can that be uh, uh, applied uh, for, for, for our network as well? I mean, it's mm. free currently? Uh, the digital escape room is yeah. as actually, uh, teachers can make them on their own okay. using Google Form. There okay. are actually a lot of resources on the internet teaching <coughs> how teachers can make uh, this game using Google Form or Microsoft Form. So let us know if you are interested in, in, in doing this. Uh, this is directed to the teachers because this can be applied to the students very, very, very easily. Yeah. And uh, maybe we can work towards uh, doing a special workshop for this. 
Mm -hmm. I think they'll be interested uh, to do that. Uh, we'll promote this for you and uh, we'll, we will see if there's any takers for it because I think there's a lot of teachers out there who are just looking for more content, mm -hmm. especially where AR VR is concerned. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so here let me uh, show you a video uh, as to how the uh, AR model looks like now on my screen. Now, in order to, to wield the AR model, so we will need uh, a device, you know, such as a phone or a tablet. Then I'll actually uh, show it to uh, my student. Yeah. So here we need to uh, first uh, launch the AR app. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then after that, I have to point the camera of the device. Yeah towards a particular picture so in this case a picture of a flower yeah the picture of a flower then yeah after that you can see now a 3d model pop up yeah from the picture so this is the ar model so after that uh you know i can use the device i move the device around so that i can actually explore the model from different angle from the left from the right you know and also from the top so that we get a better view of the flower so as though that we are looking at the real flower yeah. yeah the real yeah. thing yeah even though with mco we, we just have to stay at home yeah, yeah but you can still look at you know this flower you no know, closely we can also add animation right you can have a bee coming in and yeah you think you can see that yeah so now uh, see. yeah there's also animation involved yeah? yeah so now we see the cross section of the flower with some labels showing the name of the different parts of the flower so that the the user will know yeah, the names of the different parts of the flower now it is showing uh, something like what we call a pollen tube. It grows all the way down to the part of the flower called the uh, ovary. Mm -hmm. So eventually, you know, uh, a process called fertilization will happen. Yeah, will happen. So now we will uh, move further. Okay, now, now the pollen tube reaches the uh, ovule already. So and then later on, we'll zoom in into the ovule to see. Uh, what happened in the ovule so what what are the structures in the ovule yeah so here we can see that in the ovule there's this thing called the egg cell wow. yeah the egg cell so and then the male gamete so egg cell is a female gamete female reproductive cell so now the male gamete yeah will then fuse with the egg cell and eventually it will form something called zygote yeah so basically this animation showcase to this you know to the user uh, the pros not just the structure of the flower but also the process of uh, uh, plant reproduction mm -hmm. fertilization yeah yeah so basically students can actually see like they can actually like seeing mm -hmm. you know uh, the process of fertilization ha happening in front of them yeah it's just amazing I, I wish I had this during my time <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lo, uh, Mr. Lo. and uh, you can see how easy it is for students to actually follow mm. the, the lessons if it's if it's presented in this form. Mm. Yeah. Very, very easy for them to understand. Yeah. Okay, then after that, uh, I would like to also show a little bit about the digital escape room. So uh, basically, this is, a, this is used as a review activity for the uh, to supplement the AR model. So um, the digital escape room is basically an online uh, we follow the online station game concept. It's nothing new, yeah. So a lot of teachers have been using it, uh, and we can actually make it using Google Form, yeah. And we can use it not only for biology. We can use it for chemistry, physics, you know, even yeah. English, and so on, yeah. So in this, I use this as a review activity. So there are around like four stations all together. So the student would have to uh, is given a mission. Then after that, for every station, every level, there will be some question related to the topic where the student would have to answer it, solve the problem. And after they get the answer, they will actually form a code. And then with the code, they are going to key in the code in order to proceed to the next level. So they do that for uh, every other level. So to make it more fun, I actually use different type of question for every level. Like the first level, I use uh, label the structure. Then second type, I use uh, fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. Then level three, they have to arrange the sequence of event. Like so, here they are given, let's say, the uh, sequence of events uh, of double fertilization, but they are in the wrong order. So they need to arrange it in the correct order to get a code, so that they key in the code and then they can move on to level four and finally, mission accomplished. Yeah. So this is a way to 
test their knowledge uh, yeah, and un to gauge their understanding for the subject. These are really heavy subjects and mm. what you've done is you made it into a, a, into a gamification mm -hmm. to make it much simpler for, for people to absorb. Yeah. That's great. Mm. Yeah. So, and um, beside the uh, AR model for uh, biology, so uh, in health also, we, we have uh, also some AR models for other subjects also. Mm -hmm. No, we have AR model for physics, for chemistry, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and also a few more for biology. Yeah, so as a summary, uh, you no, know, in the teaching of you no know, STEM subject, uh, in health, we try to incorporate a variety of different educational tools, whether it's in digital format or non-digital format. So in order to uh, improve the engagement and the interactivity between the teachers and the students. Yeah. I think that's really, really great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lo. And, um, I see a number of applications here, especially now students are more savvy uh, mm. in, in this uh, new, new uh, age. Yeah. I think um, it's, it's really incredible for them to, to actually be able to do that. When we were young, you know, we didn't have the, the access. You kids right now, you all have the access. The teachers uh, that are watching, um, you have the access actually to the, to the lecturers. Uh, you can come to STEM for Makerspace and ask us to see if you'd like to have uh, workshops for this because uh, uh, Mr. Lowe is just showing you on the uh, biology part of it but we have other things as well. So thank you very much Mr. Lowe okay. and uh, Mr. Xiao as well. I want to jump over, we're going to jump uh, to, to the other side of the world and meet with Mr. Chatura and uh, Mr. Chatura, let me just give you a good introduction here. In Mr. Chatura, uh, Jai Singh, he is from uh, Hologo World and the Hologo story started back in 2007 and uh, it's, it's really cool because they have a library they have a library of more than uh, uh, 300 lessons plus uh, across subjects such as sciences, maths, uh, geography and all available in 3D and AR so that's a very exciting thing so Mr. Ch uh, Chatora, he, he has, he's, uh, I think he started off as a teacher in the primary and secondary and um, he's currently the, the head, after, head of uh, Global Partnerships and Head of Production Department as well. So we're very uh, happy to meet and, uh, with Mr. Chatera. Mr. Chatera, over to you. I think you want to talk about the, the pr uh, product walkthrough for the app and also the web. So over to you. Thank you, William. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so yes, as um, William just um, spoke of, my name is Chatera and I'm the Chief Growth Officer at Hologo. Uh, basically, I look after global partnerships and product growth and drive. Um, and uh, in short, um, Hologo, uh, what we are is basically a, a digital education platform and primarily a digital education resource and a tool um, that can be used by teachers to enhance their teaching uh, methodology and experience, and of course, uh, can be used by uh, students and even parents to enhance uh, the learning environment. So uh, as with regards to Hologo, um, so we started this journey. So we actually uh, operate um, 14 international schools, all currently based in the Maldives, uh, brick and mortar physical schools. And initially we started this journey by creating videos and then uh, it, uh, it just went from one step to the other, from creating 2D videos to 3D videos, and then finally 3D models to then uh, that were transported to an AR environment when Apple introduced AR Kit 1 in 2017. And we launched our initial uh, uh, franchise flagship product um, on uh, November 2019. And since then, um, fast forward to today, uh, We've grown quite exponentially. We have uh, used a global user base of over 600,000 users, out of which 250,000 are paid uh, premium users, and we are spread across 151 countries. Uh, currently, our product uh, showcases about just uh, over 600 to 650 um, lessons, all spread across 10 and mainly focusing on middle and high school in terms of uh, standards and um, areas. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we add a minimum of 30 to 50 lessons onto the existing library on a monthly basis. And so 
And just to give you a quick uh, walkthrough on the product, I'm just going to share my screen and um, um, run you through uh, a video of uh, the mobile app that is currently available. And then if time persists, then I will take you uh, through a quick walkthrough of our web product as well. Do let me know if you can hear. Yes, we can see. It's come up. Yeah, we can see your library. Can you hear the audio? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Oh no, the audio on the video. Uh, Unfortunately, no, we, we can't hear the audio. Okay, just a second. Maybe you can just take us through it uh, with your commentary. Sure. Yeah. So basically, this is the home page, as you can see. So all the subjects are on top. And we are mainly focusing on the science subjects. As, and of course, in addition to that, there is um, geography uh, and mathematics. Ms. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chatura, can you share, yeah. can you share your screen again? It didn't come up. Uh, it went off. Just a second. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, it's coming back on. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Oh, yeah. Very good. So this is the um, mobile application. And once you enter, you get all the subjects on the top. And then uh, the home page gives you the featured lessons, which are the lessons inside the application that are provided uh, free of charge to for any user to test the product. Yes. And then, of course, uh, it's uh, followed by just the, uh, the basic science subjects, biology, chemistry, physics. And then there's mathematics and geography to follow. And we have two additional areas called animals, uh, which is basically focusing on uh, the preliminary stages of uh, animal biology and wildlife. And then there's another section called journeys. Mm. Uh, here we provide VR experiences or VR journeys to landmarks around the world, as well as outer space. And the difference here is that you do not need a VR headset to have these experiences. You can simply do that with your tablet. And when you go into a tablet, I'm sorry, when you go into um, a subject, all the lessons have been uh, arranged into uh, universal categories. And then you can simply scroll them, uh, access them through a vertical scroll or a horizontal scroll. Um, so going into a lesson, basically, as soon as you go into it, it activates the camera on your device and then it projects the, the model into the environment that uh, you see, basically, um, through the camera. And as uh, uh, that was previously mentioned, so you can actually walk around this object, you can explore it, and if, if the space doesn't persist, then you can actually use your hands and you can pinch it in, zoom it in, zoom it out, and then maneuver it in a 360-degree angle, basically. And so for all the lessons we've provided, uh, we've given standard audio lessons in support of the models as well. So students, if they want to catch up on things that they have uh, studied in school, they can just simply do that, do it as long, um, lifelong learning, um, um, teaching, or I mean, uh, learning or just uh, revision in itself. So uh, um, the actual, um, unfortunately, like there is a lesson that is currently playing, uh, which we can't here because um, the audio is not uh, working. However, so basically most of the lessons have been provided with, uh, have been broken into multiple layers. So in this case, it's the journey of two decade. And that you can see that below that I'm skipping through um, each um, slide that provides uh, a separate segment of the lesson. So going from identifying two decade to the infection and removal, finally filling, and then the carrying of your two. And so this is basically how most of the lessons have been uh, um, inserted into uh, the library. And you have the features on the bottom right. So the play icon is to simply play the lesson that is at hand. 
and then um, there is um, a binocular icon. So right next to it, yeah, there's a label icon where when you yeah. press on the label icon, you can get rid of the labels and then you can have them reappear as well. And on the far right, um, there's a binocular icon. Um, this is an icon that we call Explore Mode, which is only available for um, teachers. And uh, what, it, what we have provided here is the first level of lesson customization uh, for teachers. So how are teachers able to on this first level is um, they can basically, you could see a record button once you click on it. Uh, teachers are able to basically uh, press the record button and voice in their own custom audio overlay of uh, the lesson that is at hand. And so if it's the lesson of QBK, basically they can skim through all the um, slides that are below. And while they're doing it, they can speak and voice into um, the, the device and the, the application. And then once they're finished uh, voicing the entire lesson, they can simply press on the record button again, which will allow them to, um, and the, to, record, um, to save uh, mm. uh, the lesson into the um, application itself. And later the save lessons can be shared into uh, within uh, private networks that the teacher has um, within um, the application itself. Uh, just a question, uh, Chatora. And um, uh, Chatora, just yeah. a question. Uh, uh, does the teacher have to subscribe uh, for this or is this a free version? No, to get these uh, uh, options and applications, uh, they have, you have to be a premium user. Yeah, you have to be a the, premium um, user, that's right. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. yeah, and the free uh, in general, you I believe are entitled to about uh, one to two, like three lessons uh, in each uh, category right. that you could just browse through yeah. uh, and make use of on an um, as on a spectatorial basis. Uh, and then, if you want to go dive deep into the uh, the customization tools, then yes, you need to subscribe. Yes. Um... I'd like to thank you also because the, 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 we have had some uh, prizes that we got from Hologo in terms of the subscriptions that they gave free subscriptions. Yes. So very, very appreciative of that. Those who took it up were very, very happy. <laughs> they really benefited from that. Brilliant. Yeah. I believe uh, at the time we only uh, had uh, the mobile application that was available. So all those prize winners today, they can go into our website and they can access uh, Hologo through their laptop or even Chromebook device because we have uh, launched our web version. So there is no yeah. uh, bottleneck in terms of device compatibility. So absolutely anybody who yeah. received it who was unable to use it before would be able to use it now. Very good. So afterwards, uh, Mr. Chatora will, will type in the link for you guys. Uh, I see some, some of you are asking for the link to Hologo. In fact, uh, you can just type in Hologo, H-O-L-O-G-O, -O, and you can go directly to the website as well. But uh, Mr. Okay. Chatra, maybe you can type it in afterwards. Thank you. Yeah. Carry on. So basically, this is how you access all those custom lessons that you've created as a teacher uh, to be shared or to be used um, at your liking. And in this case, what you what teachers are able to do is uh, they're able to make these custom audio overlays directed to specific curriculums and specific grades. Um, so it's um, um, appropriate. And um, just to skip through. So we actually have a game uh, as in assessments provided in the form of gamification. And this is the first level of uh, gamification that we've introduced for all the models. Okay. So for Very the nice. students to test uh, their knowledge. So uh, two formats have been provided. One is in the form of matching labels and creating, uh, choosing the correct models. What we have here is matching the labels. So simply what students need to do is to press on the play button and then match the labels into the correct uh, slot. And um, if you uh, match it correctly, of course, uh, the environment stays green. But if you match it incorrectly, it, uh, the environment turns red and it rearranges the, uh, the, um, the lesson or the labels. Oh, and of course, as to how good. fast you uh, complete uh, the assessment, it provides a score. So as you can see here, I've got 166, but on the top right, 
uh, my top score for this specific um, assessment is um, uh, 190. So at the moment, we have a single uh, assessment piece available for all the lessons. However, we'll be uh, putting into offering uh, multiple uh, assessment pieces um, for um, every single lesson uh, by uh, early uh, Q1 next year. So there'll be more um, features. Very, very and here, of, this is uh, this is the journeys function that uh, I mentioned earlier. So here, of course, what happens is so you need to go into a journey of your choosing, and then in, once you open that journey, a portal opens. You have to bring hope, and then you have to physically walk in. And once you walk in, you are taken into the environment that you have chosen. So in this case, I chose the solar system, and of course, that's my room and that's the door so I can minimize the door and I can walk around as if I am immersed in or I am gliding through the solar system itself and uh, observe and explore it and we have created this completely by scratch with um, um, a spatial recognition so you could actually walk towards planets and they would be become larger in size and you could actually walk away from it and they would reduce in size so you could actually walk all the way to Pluto and Pluto would look as big as the sun does right now. And you, when you look back from Pluto, uh, the sun would, would look as small as Pluto would. Oh, and so this, really is, this has been a very, uh, very popular uh, segment uh, for our uh, platform, in the, especially in the past 15 months. During COVID, teachers have made immense use of this, especially in the fields of geography, earth and space sciences, um, uh, creative writing, reading. Uh, and uh, even uh, emo social emotional learning as well. And yeah, so basically, once you're done, uh, don't worry, you don't get, you're not trapped in space. You could always use the door <laughs> and you can walk back into the real world. Uh, we, we would love to keep you there so you could explore more. But yeah, I mean, you always have the option to walk back out and then come back uh, to the office. <laughs> yes, this, this come is back incredible. To the real and to the office. This is incredible, Chatur. I hope all the students uh, uh, yeah. that, that have uh, looked at this and uh, will try to explore. Anything else to share, Mr. Chatur, on your side? Yeah, um, so the final piece is yes. the animals piece. Uh, okay. This, again, as I mentioned, is, it's, it's, a, it's a segment to, that we cater to a younger group of uh, users, mainly pre-kindergarten uh, to kindergarten and primary. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, my daughter loves this segment. She loves bringing animals into the room and then <laughs> having to see them almost like they're there in real life. And then at the bottom, we give the basic interactions of the animal and uh, so that they mimic it. And then for teachers, of course, they have the exploration mo mode where they could press it in and they can put in an audio of uh, the animal and uh, to speak of the animal and then save it and they can use it at a later date or share it among students as well when needed. Excellent. So, yeah, I mean, this is in short uh, the, um, uh, the uh, mobile app. And as I mentioned uh, just moments ago, this is the uh, web platform the web. and you could access it at hologo.world. I could uh, drop in the email, I'm uh, sorry, drop in the link as well, the URL. Yes. Please. And once you go into the application, it's a very straightforward place. I mean, you simply need to, yeah. Once you go in, you have everything here. And then when you go into products, so uh, the difference on the web is that initially we just had one single universal library, which is still active on the app. However, on the web, we have gone ahead into creating custom modules that are completely curriculum aligned. So, what, for example, when you go into science, so you'll see a basic and overall module called basic system. And uh, here you will see curriculum aligned modules. So CBSC is one of the largest curriculums used in India. And so we are doing alignments to these uh, curriculums and grade specific alignments. So it almost is like, so when you go in, it's like, it is mirroring your textbook. So it's very easy for both teachers and st uh, students to navigate the, uh, the module and to identify and uh, access lessons very conveniently. 
and um, another thing is of course so even in uh, Malaysia we are actually in the process of um, creating SPM form 4 and form 5 bundles for science mm -hmm. and I believe uh, it will be launched very soon and of course we will let our partners in uh, Malaysia uh, we will inform them once it goes live and uh, yeah so basically once you go into the web platform very similar to um, uh, the app, uh, anybody who does not have the compatibility uh, to access the uh, AR app, they'll always be able to go onto the web in this format and then they can simply go into a lesson. So, for example, um, let me just go into a lesson. Say so if it's the animal cell, I can go in and what happens is um, it will load the product and very similar to how you saw it on uh, the application on the video you'll be able to experience it only however the only difference is it will not be 3d it will not be ar enabled it will only be 3d enabled so okay. you will have the object that you can navigate zoom in zoom out and play around in the same manner however you will just have a white background at the at the back and if all other functions um, will be there as it so it's Thank you. That, that is uh, very interesting. So you have two choices. You can either go into the web or, or you can go into the app itself. And uh, yes, so that's very interesting. These are you have, you have more slides. No, that's, All right. So this is basically the web interface uh, on oh, the uh, web based part of work. it. Yeah. I think that is, that is really awesome. Uh, Mr. Chatera will put in the, the links right now. Uh, take advantage of the, the, the versions that, uh, that are presented there. And uh, hopefully we can have, uh, uh, please keep us uh, updated as well for the, for the Malaysia side uh, when you're updating for the Form 4, Form 5. So that'll be very interesting for us to actually follow up on. And uh, take this opportunity to thank Mr. Chotara. He's actually in Sri Lanka. So thank you so much for, for spending some time. I think you're three hours uh, before. I think you're about nine o'clock right now. Sorry yeah, to wake you up no, so early. Yeah, two and a half, yeah. Yeah, two, two and, and a half. half. Not too bad, yeah, right? Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. All right. So I'd like to end the session by 12. So uh, thank you again, Mr. Chatara. And back at the studio here, That's I'd great. like to thank uh, Mr. Thanks. Lo and Mr. Xiao for sharing and also help university. So you guys, uh, there's a little bit more for you all. Uh, right now, um, on another channel, at 12 o'clock, we're having a session uh, with, with Code Kids. It's called uh, the second session for Roblox Studio Coding Workshop. It's, uh, the title is uh, Squid Game Green Light, Red Light. So if you're into that, you can, you can go and uh, see Teacher Yvonne over there. And uh, 2 o'clock is another session that we're having. It's a free maths workshop. I think you guys should try to take advantage of it. If you haven't registered, please go in and register. And uh, it, it is conducted by Coach Phyllis Frida of Key to Maths. And the topic is addition and subtraction for year two and three. So these are important workshops that you all can actually take adva advantage on. Um, do we have any questions from, from anyone um, before we end? I don't think I see any questions right huh? From the, Daryl, any questions? Nothing, right? From YouTube side? Yeah. So I think uh, I'd like to end right now and thank you very much again to our panel. And we'll, we hope that you can keep uh, watching us, uh, stay, stay on our Facebook, uh, what do you call it, channel to see what are the latest updates. And also tomorrow morning, uh, I think 11 o'clock to 12.30, we're having a session where we'll be, um, what do you call it, uh, going through the winners for the quizzes that we've been having. Uh, that will be run by uh, Mr. Ramish. So thank you everyone and good day.